we're going to find the general term of a sequence. And to find the general term of a sequence, what we want to do is we want to take the sequence, whatever it is, and we're going to list the entry above it. So this is the first term, second term, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. And then we want to look for an apparent pattern. What is there about this number that does something to this entry? And we call that the apparent pattern. So we want to be able to find the apparent pattern. And there's going to be something about this number that gives us this one. And so we're going to start with a case where we go 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, and so on. So we'll enter the numbers. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then all the others above it will follow the same pattern. And so we know that our a sub n equals something. Well, a sub 1 equals 1, and a sub 2 equals 3. So it looks like to go from here to here, we could add 2, or we could times by 3. Well, to go to a 3, which is a 9, that's adding 6, or timesing by 3. And to go to 4, that's a 27, so that's adding 18, or timesing by 3. Three. So notice that we're constantly timesing by 3. That means it looks like we have a 3 to a power. But, we'll, but we need to go back to here, because remember, a1 is 1. So what power do I raise 3 to to get 1? Well, 0. But my n is 1, so I need to subtract 1 from this. So my general term is 3 to the n minus 1. So if we were to check that real quick, a sub 5 is 3 to the 5 minus 1, which is 3 to the 4th, which is 3 squared times 3 squared, which is 9 times 9, which is 81, which is what we were expecting to see. So we found an apparent pattern by comparing the pieces, and then we checked that against here. So notice I used multiple pieces to make sure that I was getting a constant piece out of it. Well, this one's a little bit harder. We still have our first term, our second term, our third term, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And the issue here is that we're changing signs every time. And so just a really cool rule to know is that if we're changing signs every time, then that means we have minus one to some power that has an n in it. And so we need to look at this. We look at the first one, and we say, is that positive or negative? And it's a zero, so that doesn't help us. So let's look at the second one. And so if I were to plug two in, Minus 1 to the 2 equals a negative 1 isn't true because it's an even power, so I need to make sure it's odd, so we're going to add 1 to it. So for the sign, this will handle our alternating signs. It'll go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So this will handle our signs and make sure that every other one is negative. So look for where your first negative is. If it's even, you need to add 1 to it. If it's odd, you just leave it alone. The second part's not quite as easy, but I want you to notice that if we look at this, the 2 appears here, the 3 is here, the 4 is here, the 5 is here, the 6 is here, and so on. We don't see anything here, but it's really easy to put this over 1 and it's still a 0, and then the 1 matches. So it looks like we also are creating a fraction with n on the bottom. And if you look at the top, this is always 1 less than n minus 1, because 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 minus 1 is 4, 6 minus 1 is 5. So our general term, a n, is this power to the n plus 1 times n minus 1 over n. This is our general term, and that will let us find any term that we want to find.